ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानाजन शलाकय चक्षुरोन्मीतुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मह्यम ददा स्वापदाक वंदेहम श्रीगुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरुन वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागर जात सहगन रघुनाथन्वित तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पर्जन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादा सहगन ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता हे कृष्ण कर्णा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपि राधा कांत नमोस्तते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैतिकाधार श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम कौति वाचा पंगु लंगाइते गिरी यत्तम वंदे श्री गुरु दीनतारिण so we are uh, we are completed 13th chapter and we are beginning 14th chapter 14th chapter is titled the modes of uh, material nature <clears throat> so it gives a lot of practical knowledge about how the world uh, operates and how maya or illusion covers the uh the jiva uh, the soul hmm? so that is the um, uh, first section if you see this the liberation and conditioning of the living entity how conditioning conditioning means transforming right the soul is pure but something is covering it to make it look like it is material how that transformation happens right how that conditioning works so that is discussed in the first section second one is again description of the binding of the pure soul by the three modes right for the description on the same concept what is that force that binds the jiva in the material existence that is further described here recognizing the supremacy a mode within a person sukr so if you want to get liberated or if you want to be uh, you know freed from the conditioning that we have uh, we need to know first what is that mode that is dominating us there are multiple modes there are three modes that are binding us in the material existence to get rid of it first of all you need to know what that is so that is described here and then uh different types of actions a lot of knowledge is given actions in mode of goodness actions in mode of passion actions in mode of ignorance actions are uh, related to death right so uh, not uh, not actions but you know death in different modes what are the results all of that is described in the next section and then uh transcending the modes how can one overcome the three modes right so a lot of description how do you identify your mode right these are all relevant topics first how is that condition right that is the first two sections second is how uh, you can identify what is the mode based on your own actions in your life how can you identify what is the mode that is predominant in your life and next general description of people who perform actions you know uh how their actions fall either in mode of goodness or you know sattva guna mode of passion or rajoguna or mode of ignorance or tamo guna right uh and what happens to people when they die in the mode of ignorance mode of passion mode of goodness right? and how finally one can overcome all the modes that is the last section so let's uh, let's start with the verses you can all unmute yourself and uh, repeat after me 
श्री भगवान उच परम भूया प्रवक्ष्या परम सिद्धि Thank you, Prabhu. The supreme personality of God had said, "Again, I shall declare to you the supreme wisdom, the best of all knowledge, knowing which all the sages have attained the supreme perfection." Hmm. So, Lord Krishna Himself uh, is talking here. So, Krishna is saying, "This is a very, uh, you know, this is like the best of knowledge." and all the sages have actually attained this knowledge and by attaining this knowledge they achieve supreme perfection right without this knowledge one cannot liberate oneself they need to know so that is the importance of this knowledge so lord uh, proper explains further on this hmm. <clears throat> जायन्ते बाई बिकमिंग फिक्स इन दिस नॉलेज वन कैन अटेन टू दसेंडेंटल नेचर लाइक माई ओन दस एस्टैब्लिश वन इज नॉट बॉर्न एट द टाइम ऑफ क्रिएशन आर डिस्टर्ब एट द टाइम ऑफ डिसोल्यूशन by becoming fixed in this knowledge means when one realizes this knowledge means it is part of his life right it's not just theory it is practical for him right so when that happens he becomes spiritual fully because lord is spiritual like that uh, the jiva who attains that knowledge becomes spiritual in nature transcendental in nature and and as a result because he is spiritual in nature there is no material birth in the material world so at the time of creation there is no rebirth for that jiva and he will never be disturbed at the time of dissolution also hmm. that's the result so krishna glorified the knowledge in the first verse and he gave falashruti falashruti means what is the benefit of this knowledge that is described in the second verse so uh, can you read yeah read this part from those in ignorance of this think that spiritual existence is opposed to material variety but actually in the spiritual sky one attains a spiritual form there are spiritual activities and the spiritual situation is called devotional life that atmosphere is said to be uncontaminated and there is one and their one is equal in quality with the supreme lord to obtain such knowledge one must develop all the spiritual qualities one who thus develops the spiritual qualities is not affected either by the creation or by the destruction of the material world hmm one who thus develops the spiritual qualities is not affected either by the creation or by the destruction of the material world uh, so they are not affected at all मम यो निर्महद्रह्मस्मृत 
The total material substance called Brahman is the source of birth and is and it is that Brahman that I impregnate, making possible the births of all living beings, O son of Bharata. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a great detail about the description of how the creation happens. So Brahman, Brahman means is actually energy of the Lord. No? Brahman, Parabrahman. Uh, so it, uh, it, it's it's also called uh, Pradhan or Mahatattva. And that is actually uh, like energy emitted from the Supreme Lord. And in that, Brahman through the glance of the Lord, glance of Mahavishnu, uh, the jivas will start taking births in various bodies. Right? So that is the whole process. I know Lord Krishna just dis described this in one line, uh, but there is so much, you know, actual process that happens. But interestingly, he says, "I impregnate." You see. So it clearly shows uh, Lord Krishna is the source of all this material existence, right? making possible the births of all living entities. Right? Uh, actually, uh, who is the in charge of material creation? Who actually creates the material um, world? Uh, any, anyone want to say based on what we discussed in the past? Brahmadev. Yeah, Brahmadev is, is called actually secondary creator. He's, uh, he's like an engineer who puts up, if suppose engineer means who will put all the, you know, ingredients together and build a building, for example. So Brahmaji is a secondary creator, but who is the primary, who put all the, who created all the ingredients first? Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu is the uh, original source of all the material existence, right? From his body, uh, the the universes emanate like golden globules. Golden globules means like a gold particles. They come from the pores of his body, and from that, uh, and then they expand and they touch. They come in touch with the Brahman, like that. Uh, yeah, that like uh, Lord was saying, right? Uh, no, uh, you know, here. Right? I impregnate. So this, so this, you know, from the bodily pores of Mahavishnu, these golden globules come out, and they, you know, get in touch with this Brahman, right? This Brahman is energy of the Lord that is spread all over, and uh, right from there they they expand into universes. And after, so this is the first stage of creation. Right? Second, in the second stage of creation, this um, this universe is called Brahmaanda. Brahmaanda. Brahmaanda means Anda means Agar, right? Brahmaanda means it is made of Brahman, right? Brahman means it's actually a, a spiritual in nature, but it is a material substance. That is, you know, the that is created from the Supreme Lord, right? So it's like an egg, like when there is an egg, right? Egg is the beginning of existence. But from within the egg, the life starts growing, right? So similarly, for the second stage of growth or, or development, the same Mahavishnu expands into another form called Garbhodaka Sai Vishnu. Garba Vodaka Sai. Sai means who exists everywhere. Garba means within the egg. Vodaka means he is lying on the you know on the waters within the universe. Right? So this whole universe is like a egg. 
it's egg shaped actually uh, it, it's not it's not uh, like a ball it's not like a circular ball it's actually egg that's why it's called um uh, what is it the term uh, brahmanda brahmanda right? it's called brahmanda so within that brahmanda garbhodar sai vishnu uh, he takes in charge he goes into that egg egg called universe and from there actually the creation begins he also is looks like mahavishnu only but mahavishnu is the source of all the universes anantakoti brahmandas right into each brahmanda again the same mahavishnu expands into another form called garbhodaka sai vishnu and from his navel a lotus sprouts and in that lotus who is placed brahma brahma ji is brahma. yeah so in that lotus brahma ji is born he is called swayambhu swayambhu means he has no mother father he is just born his father is uh, garbhodak sai vishnu so maha uh, uh, garbhodak sai vishnu was lying in the kaza ocean and brahma is born he is extremely intelligent brahma his his whole body is made of intelligence and so brahma ji was given an idea uh, he was hinted by a voice without uh, without any form right so that that voice hints him tapa right so he was hinted to perform tapasya tapasya so he performs tapasya for thousands of years and gets the intelligence and knowledge to actually perform the work of creation once he attains the knowledge to perform the work of creation that is his service or you know the service to the lord so he begins the process of creation so that and all the ingredients are already available for him at the time so he mixes and matches and creates this 14 layer universe right bottom is called atala atala vitala sutala patala tala tala rasatala mahatala uh, and again bhuloka bhorloka uh, swargaloka maharloka janaloka tap uh, tapaloka and then finally uh, brahmaloka right so there are 14 planets planetary systems like that and each of them are each of them is better than the other previous bottom one and in each of these planes the living entities are placed according to their previous karma it's just like uh, like somebody built apartments right there are 1 bhk 2 bhk 3 bhk luxury right brahma ji builds all these apartments you now based on what you can pay in terms of rent if you can pay you know some you can you can pay only a little then you will be put in 1 bhk so based on one's karma it's called sanchit karma one is placed into a particular house right or a particular plane 14 planets or planetary systems are available right? so the lowest is the tala tala or at the uh, you know uh, lowest planets patal living entities with uh, you know extremely uh, ugra karmas or negative karmas will be placed at the lowest planetary system and the highest ones who are almost ready for achieving highest perfection they will be placed in brahmaloka the topmost right it's like the luxury planetary system but every layer is just another level of existence in the material world so more or less there is going to be birth death old age and disease meaning uh, any anywhere in the material world a uh, brahma bhuvanar loka punaravrutan arjuna means wherever you are placed in the material existence there is punaravrutti punaravrutti means repeated birth and death hmm? 
so anywhere you go it's it's a temporary place and you may be subjected to return again if you don't uh, fulfill the purpose of life so that is that is the uh, whole gamut of existence in the material world now to get out of this world one need to understand the knowledge about uh, you know, the purpose of life and uh, what he has to do and how this material world is actually a binding place through the agency of modes of material nature the, it's an agency it's an energy that binds us to the existence of material world right so one need to know all this so that he can liberate himself out of this material existence yeah so same thing is explained here. sarvayonishu kaunteya sarvayonishu kaunteya murtaya sambhavantiya murtaya murtaya sambhavantiya tasham brahma mahavyone tasham brahma mahavyone aham bija pradhapita ियल <coughs> तासाम ब्रह्म महद्योने अहम बीज पदा प्रदापिता अहम मींस कृष्ण इज सेइंग मी आई एम बीज प्रदा मींस आई एम द सीड गिविंग फादर ब्रह्मा जी इज अ सेकेंडरी क्रिएटर ही यू नो ही गिव्स यू नो द होम आर द प्लेन ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस बट एक्चुअली हु इज द ओरिजिनल सीड गिविंग फादर इट इज द महाविष्णु बट महाविष्णु इज हु इज महाविष्णु he is an expansion of the expansion of the expansion of the expansion of krishna right from krishna the immediate expansion is balaram from him comes the chaturvyuha uh, narayana right uh, shankarshana pradyumna aniruddha vasudeva the four vishnus from uh, the first uh, you know uh, the first expansion comes narayana from narayana comes uh, again uh, the second secondary uh, chaturvyuha from that comes mahavishnu so he is an expansion of the expansion of the expansion of the expansion of krishna right so mahavishnu is at a fourth level of existence from krishna and he is the source of all existence so indirectly krishna is the source of origin is the original father of all so that's what is being said here i am the seed giving father prabhu i am confused here so mahavishnu is the so everything is sourced from mahavishnu right then again but krishna is the, how come krishna is the expansion of expansion of krishna krishna no no krishna is the source krishna uh, is the source uh, Now here.
I want to show a particular diagram, but nobody, uh, they, uh, we, we have it. Okay, maybe Prabhu would have covered one second. Let's see. No, I didn't get it. Not here. See. So Krishna here. Um, the incarnations are all here, but from him, you know, uh, again, this Chaturvyuha is not given here. Uh, Swayam Rupa means original and uh, you know, Tadekatma Rupa, Avesh Rupa, Shakta, Adhizadhi, Avesh Avtaras, Purusha Avtaras, Leela Avtaras. They're all, um, so all the Mahavishnu and Garbhodak Sai Vishnu, Kshirodak Sai Vishnu that we discussed, they all come under um, Purusha Avataras. See? Purusha means controller. The Purusha Avatara are the three supreme controllers of the material manifestation. Karanodak Sai Vishnu or Mahavishnu, Garbodak Sai Vishnu and Kshirodak Sai Vishnu. Karanodak Sai Vishnu creates the unlimited universes. You see? From him comes a Garbodak Sai Vishnu for each universe. Right? From Garbodak Sai Vishnu comes Brahma. Uh, the secondary secondary material creator, like I was telling, right, as well as the Kiro Daksai Vishnu, who enters every atom and each universe and is also known as the super soul or Paramatma. Paramatma sits in the heart of all living entities, giving direction to them uh, in their material journey. And then Leela Avataras, Guna Avataras. So these are all uh, given. Uh, see here? Krishna is distinguished from all others because he possesses 64 qualities in full. Other manifestations Krishna uh, possess varying degrees of these qualities. And this is just a science of it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Krishna who is source of all and the Krishna who appeared in Dvapara Yuga, uh, mm -hmm. this, how do we understand these two personalities? Oh, that is just a, you know appearance past time, but he was there before also. It's not, uh, that is the cycle of you know uh, reappearance. Even before that, also there is, uh, Krishna appears every once in every four Yugas, right? So, Yes. The recent cycle he came in Dwapar Yuga. But before that, he came in the previous Dwapar Yuga, like that. Right? So it's a repeated cycle. Like somebody coming to your home, your relative, doesn't mean that is his first day of you know coming to your home, right? He comes every okay. every three months, for example, or six months. So is it like we understand the Krishna in Dwapar Yuga is energy of the Krishna from uh, who, who is the source of all? He's not energy. He's the same. He is the same. Same. Self same uh, Krishna came in, you know, in Dwapar Yuga. Uh, one second. So the word I'm trying to use uh, uh, Krishna uh, Swamsa Vivinnams. Yeah, this is the one I'm trying to look. Got it.
Come on, where is the picture? See, incarnations and expansions of Lord. Sri Krishna, the avatari. So Krishna is never considered as an avatar. He is an avatari. Avatari means the source of avatars. Right? And what are the avatars? There are dasa avataras, there is purusha avataras, there are leela avataras, uh, and guna avataras, manvantara, yoga avatara, sakya vesa. Right? So all this is there. But how come the picture is gone? I was looking for that picture. Right click and show it. Open in image. So somebody is asking exactly like you, how can Krishna be the source of all authors? Okay. How I am not getting the... You can right click the image and open it in new tab. Pro. Like this, open in new uh, Open image in new tab. Open, open image. Where is image? Uh, come down, come down. Oh, no. okay. yeah. So I, I want this image actually. Oh, see. Or even this is fine. Yeah, see? Uh, maybe I can do like this. See, Swayam Rupa Krishna. And from him, you know, Swayam Prakasha, Prabhava Prakasha, Vaibhava Prakasha. Vaibhava Prakasha is Balaramji. And from, you know, from Balaramji, <clears throat> Tadekatma, Vilasa, this Vasudeva, Shankarshana, Pradyumna, Aniruddha. And in the next level is actually Narayana. From there again, uh, you know, Mahavishnu comes. So it's, it's you know, layered like that. Not one person published in mm, here. Yeah. So much discussion on this topic. No, oh, this is something wrong. Hmm. I just want this in this. Okay. Wow, such in little pictures. See, understanding. Sri Krishna, Baladeva, Vasudeva, Shankarshana, Pradyumna, Aniruddha. From Shankarshana comes Narayana. 
from narayana comes vasudeva again it's called second chaturbhyuha same uh, personalities are here vasudeva shankarshana pradyumna and aniruddha from second shankarshana comes mahavishnu you see here mahavishnu karanodaka sai again garbodaka sai and from there comes kshirodaka sai or parmatma this is explained in these verses first canto second chapter 22 and 23 shrimad bhagavatam okay it's clear now oh, okay bro yeah thank you okay krishna is the original seed you can say mahavishnu is the source of all but actually if you go back in the hierarchy it is the krishna right because he is the original source Uh, so the idea is like this right so there is one god it's not only really god is multiple right but one god expands into many uh for example within the material world he expands into shambhu or shankara and durga for you know uh the same lord expands into various forms for various activities he wouldn't be coming in the same form to perform all the activities right so that is the reason for such you know, uh, uh, such incarnation so many incarnations exist for various purposes okay satyam rajas tamahi ti satyam rajas tamahi ti na prakriti sambhava महाबाहो देहे श्वेता माता जी material nature consists of three modes goodness passion and ignorance when the eternal living entity comes in contact with nature o mighty armed arjuna he becomes conditioned by these modes yeah. so material nature consists of three modes goodness or in sanskrit what is it called sattva sattva Sattva. And passion means rajoguna. 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 Yeah. Tamoguna. Tamoguna. Yeah. So material nature consists of three modes. These are like, you know, uh, three uh, energies that are acting on us, right? Uh, three hooks. Like you know, if there is a fish in the water. There are three hooks are trying to capture that. Uh, like that right when the eternal living entity means the soul comes in contact with nature or material nature nature means material nature which is of these three modes o mighty arm dajuna becomes conditioned by these modes as a pure soul you have no material desires but today now you think okay i need to have this i need to have that i want to do this i want to do that all this inclinations for various activities can you relate if you are in the mode of ignorance you have certain specific tastes if you are in the mode of passion you have certain uh, specific tastes if you are in the mode of goodness you have certain specific tastes so in this way uh, you are conditioned in various ways uh right uh, condition means you are shaped you are shaped right according to your particular attractions when the living entity comes in contact with nature material nature he becomes conditioned by these modes right transform condition means transformed he doesn't think he is uh, he is spirit anymore he thinks he is this body and he need to fulfill the desires of this body right that is all because uh he was conditioned one time narad muni 
you know you all know narada muni right narada muni visits uh, indra loka indra loka where uh, lord indra was the king in swarga loka right indra loka or swarga loka are same it is a little better planet than you know the our existence called bhuva you know uh, bhuloka and bhuvar loka swarga loka is a little better planet than us and there are it's, it's in the you know sixth in the hierarchy of 14 planetary systems above that are mahar loka tapa loka jana loka and brahma loka uh, but swarga loka is considered uh, a very superior planet compared to our uh, existence here in the middle world and this planet this planet is filled with uh, 30 crore demigods who are the rulers of bhu and bhuvar loka right they extend their rulership on this so they provide all the facilities like you know water air health food all of this is taken care by the demigods for us uh, so once narada muni visits indra loka and indra loka uh, he was you know he meets indra <clears throat> and uh, uh, so he um, nar you know uh, uh, so he actually <clears throat> uh, wants to make indra understand about material existence so he uh, he you know he he ba- basically changes the body of indra into a pig in the bhuloka so he becomes a pig and uh, he loiters in the gutters right he was uh, like eating what pig seat so indra takes pity on sorry uh, narada muni takes pity on indra and he comes after some time and tells uh, the pig indra who was actually original indra the king of heavenly planet he tells him hey uh, pig you are actually indra uh, why are you loitering in this you know gutters here in you know in a lower planetary system called you know bhuloka your existence is much superior go back to your uh, your planet and rule the king uh, rule as the king he said you know no 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 don't say like that i am very happy here i have my wife i have my children and i am the king of this gutter Uh, if i am not there who will take care of everybody so in that way <clears throat> as soon as one gets the specific body whether you are indra or you are chandra whatever he gets conditioned to the existence around he thinks he is the boss and he wants to he is enjoying he thinks that he is enjoying the life and he wants to stay in this life he was amazed indra was amazed how the jiva gets conditioned in this way he thinks that there is nothing better than this that is how jiva thinks as soon as he gets a specific body uh so in uh, the the story further continues i don't want to go further uh, uh so in this way like every jiva gets conditioned to its current circumstances and thinks that this is the best one can have and he doesn't want to get rid of it Right, at any cost so that is the nature of a material existence it somehow makes you feel this is the most comfortable situation i just need to adjust little bit here and there i need to better my finances i need to better my you know education of children and my own health and i'll be happy here okay i don't need to worry about going anywhere you know, i just need to stay here uh, take care of these things and i'll be fine so that's that's actually conditioning by the material nature makes you think it is okay to be here right but actually the the miseries are always there right adhyatmika adi bhautika adi daivika clashes are there right? sometimes by the nature sometimes by the body and mind sometimes by the relatives right it's always there but the jiva gods gets conditioned and he thinks it's okay i can adjust with all these things i can adjust my lifestyle and i'll be fine 
right so that adjustment mentality is the influence of the modes of nature on us we'll understand more about how these modes influence us uh, when the eternal living entity means the soul proper the soul proper comes in contact with material nature he develops all these desires i need to buy this i need to get this i can fulfill these desires i'll be happy but actually the jiva has nothing to do this with, with this material existence and all this is a temporary fairs show he doesn't realize you know his family changes his everything changes as soon as his body changes but he thinks this is everything actually uh, i will share one um, interesting uh, incarnation story of a devotee a devotee who was shela prabhupada's disciple uh, you know uh, very early disciple he passed away in 1970 sometime early 1970 and he reincarnated again after say you know 10 or so years and he remembered his past life how you know how he was chanting and he went to those places and you know he recognized who that person was he was in the previous life uh, so we can see from so many stories like that that you know this this world is a temporary place and you know we keep coming back again and again until we perfect our life so that devotee was not you know um, he, he didn't you know fully engage in spiritual life so he was given another opportunity to again continue his spiritual path right he was you know in the past he was in american body in the second he was in indian he was a male boy in the past life and in the next one he becomes girl and he explains the reasons why he became a girl in the second one a very fascinating story i'll i'll share that link uh, the pdf link the reincarnation of raghava uh, uh, what is his name yeah uh, very interesting story you will be convinced about the philosophy of bhagavad gita like how the jiva you know continues its cycle of material existence until it gets liberated fully tatra satvam nirmalatvat tatra satvam nirmalatvat prakashakam anamayam prakashakam anamayam sukha sange padhati sukha sange padhati jnana sange anaga jnana sange anaga okay okay who would read who hasn't read yet Rani Mataji. Yes. Oh, sinless one, the mode of goodness being purer than the others is illuminating and it frees one from all sinful reactions. Those situated in that mode become conditioned, conditioned by a sense of happiness and knowledge. Hmm. The top mode is mode of goodness. Uh, it is purer than others it is illuminating and it frees one from all sinful reactions because if you are in the mode of goodness you will not perform actions that will cause sinful reactions your actions are pure uh, but this is all good good about mode of goodness but again mode of goodness is also a binding platform meaning it also keeps you in the material existence uh so the reasons why it binds you in the material existence is it gives a false sense of happiness and knowledge conditioned by a sense of happiness these people they are knowledgeable they are happy because they they understand a lot about life right they live a pure life uh you know for example people Uh, who are like brahmanas you know they live a very simple life they eat sattvic food and you know they don't perform any sinful rea- sinful actions so in general they are very happy their life you know goes around temple or you know worship or 
uh, or maybe they take to a profession something like teaching uh, even in general the teaching field is considered a, you know a place where people live in mode of goodness because your interaction is about sharing knowledge right your whole uh, uh, lifestyle or you know your whole profession is gaining knowledge and sharing knowledge so that's that's considered uh, you know uh, the profession in mode of goodness uh, so these situ but the thing is they are in general these people are happier sense of happiness is more in their life and they have this knowledge scientists scientists are also you know generally come under the more you know uh, mode of goodness scientists professors brahmanas uh, any any of these categories they are not after money they are not after prestige they are not after you know um, uh, passionate work they are you know simple lifestyle and you know uh, conditioned by happiness and knowledge there is this problem right because of this they don't feel the urgency to go get out of this material world they think that this is okay this is a good place to live uh, it's not that bad because they don't you know have such negative experience in this material world mm. yeah so please read this this is a very important purport the living entity is conditioned by material nature nature are of various types one is happy another another is very active and another is helpless all these types of psych psychological manifestations are causes of the entities conditioned status in nature how they are dif differently conditioned is explained in this section of bhagavad gita the mode of goodness is first considered the effect of developing the mode of goodness in the material world is that one becomes wiser than other otherwise condition a man in the mode of goodness is not so much affected by material mistakes and he has a sense of advan advancement in material knowledge the representative type is brahm brahmana mm -hmm. who is supposed to be situated in the mode of goodness this sense of happiness is due to understanding that in the mode of goodness one is more or less free from sinful reactions actually in the vedic literature it is said that the mode of goodness means greater knowledge and a, and a greater sense of happiness yeah so this is mode of goodness right people are they they live you know relatively purer and so there are less sinful reactions and therefore there is a greater sense of happiness and knowledge yeah but the challenge is again they they get conditioned and so they want to continue living in the material existence yeah so please the difficulty here is that when a living entity is situated in the mode of goodness he becomes conditioned to feel to feel that he is advanced in knowledge and is better than others in this way he becomes conditioned the best example are the scientist and philosopher each is very very proud of his knowledge and because they generally improve their living conditions they feel a sort of material happiness this sense of advanced happiness in conditioned life makes them bound by the mode of goodness of material material nature as such they are attracted towards working in the mode of goodness and as long as they have an attraction for working in that way they have to take some type of body in the modes of nature thus there is so there is no likelihood of liberation or or of being transferred to the spiritual world repeatedly one one may be philosopher a scientist or a poet and repeatedly become entangled in the in the same disadvantages of birth and death but due to the illusion of the material energy one thinks that 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 
sort of life is pleasant so he may because he has attraction so as long as you have attraction you will be forced to take birth in the material existence that is the problem with material existence as long as you have attraction you are subjected to rebirth right yeah so that is mode of goodness right even though it is the best of all still if you think i you know i'm happy here the problem is that you are going to come back again that is the thing you should understand right um, yeah seven o'clock uh, we'll end we'll continue from seven to us next to next class anyone has any questions one mode of goodness or anything before that all good okay so we'll uh, resume next week thank you all very much hari krishna thank you hari krishna thank you hari krishna hari krishna